going back to the very beginnings. This was really, you know, the place to be. By gunsmith John Dowd in Goshen, Connecticut. <laughs> so he died in March. you are. I hope you haven't been waiting long for me. I can never seem to remember how long it takes to materialize from Shelburne to here. You see, about two years after I died, I, I'm dead by the way, they moved my studio and 600 of my paintings up to Shelburne. And that's where I hang out and haunting the Shelburne Museum in ghostly agony or something like that. But I do like to visit here when people are visiting my grave. It's the least I can do. So, welcome to my final resting place. I am or was Ogden Pleisner, artist, and I am quite dead, but I had a great life. Born in Brooklyn in 1905, raised by an artistic community among the concrete skyscraper canyons of New York City. I went to summer camp in Wyoming with its wide open vistas and I sketched a lot and finally learned how to paint at the Art Students League of New York. And that's important because I, like so many other Art Students League of New York students, ended up here in the Northshire. Well, while I was a student, one of my teachers invited me on a salmon fishing junket up to Nova Scotia. Well, I fell hard for fly fishing and there was a woman there. Mary fell hard for her too. Rest of my life, I painted fly fishing scenes, went salmon fishing with Mary by my side. Not bad for a small junket. So, when I was 25 years old, I began exhibiting in Manhattan galleries. Not bad for a 25 year old. One of the galleries, the most significant one, was the Macbeth Gallery. They had always exhibited the works of people like Winslow Homer and Andrew Wyeth and that ilk, you know, regionalists, but also a lot of regionalists from the Northshire because the gallery manager, Robert McIntyre, had a place up here. So that was a connection. People moved up here because of Robert McIntyre and Robert McIntyre exhibited people who were artists who lived up here. Well, long story short again, in 1947, Mary and I got a home and studio in Paulin. Vermont is a beautiful place. Out west, we had the prairies and sagebrush and mountains and snow and summer. It is much bigger, dramatic country. This, I feel, is a softer country and much more friendly. I think you can find almost anything to paint here, all kinds of subjects, the dramatic and the bucolic landscapes, almost anything. Actually, I should talk to you about the big one, World War II. I was an officer in the United States Air Force. I became their artist in residence, if you can believe that. My job was to go all around the world and paint U.S. airfields. It was just landscapes with bombers. I painted quite a few of them, and you can still see those in the Pentagon and up at the Shelburne Museum. After all that, I was an established artist. Member of the National Academy, famous for my salmon and trout fishing scenes, very active in the Southern Vermont Art Center, which is over there. And after Mary died in 1974, I remarried. A, I married a woman named Marion. 1977. We bought a place here in Manchester because people wonder why, why leave Paulette for Manchester?
And the reason why is Manchester is much better than Pollock for raising peacocks. Just take my word on it. It's much better. Anyway, that marriage only has lasted six years until 1983 when I died. I did mention that I'm dead, didn't I? So, even though that marriage only lasted six years, it seemed like it was going on forever. Because once you're in something like that, it's going on forever. It's always been, it always will be. And I guess that's what I try to evoke in my landscapes. Anyway. Thank you very much for stopping by. One more thing. There was this guy who moved from France to Dorset, opened up a small restaurant, and commuted to the Art Students League classes in New York City. Man, but he's buried in Dorset. He's the Dorset Historical Society's problem.